Hey everyone, I want to talk about this video a little bit of structuring a novel, specifically for the genre. And if you don't know the genre, it is usually is referring to the category like fantasy, science fiction, thriller, romance, and also is entirely step separate from the literary fiction of today. I will get into this with you with um, six easy steps that you can follow to figure out what it is that you need to do for your novel. Through structuring your novel. This is coming up, so be sure before we even get into it, hit the, the subscribe button and uh, for more content like this. Um, I want to introduce myself. My name is Marcel Derez. I am a novelist of one of the world's longest novels currently as of late. It has over 6 million words in it, uh, 35,555 pages, and 60 million characters with spaces. It's currently pending a Guinness World Record. So let's get into this. You have different type of uh, stream punk, romance, and different types of uh, cyber uh, crisis or magical realism, uh, modern day uh, middle grade or children's novels. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so, as I said, and uh, I'll keep links in the bottom here of my website and personal information. So if you want to keep in contact with me, tell me how much you like this video, you can. Um, please consider re uh, leaving reviews and comments. You can get my books at uh, Barnes & Noble. Just type in my full name, M-A-R-C-E-L, Ray, R-A-Y, last name Drez, D-U-R-I-E-Z. Choose to review and support my page. Let's talk about structuring. Uh, structuring for a uh, general fiction novel, we would go into the three-act plot structure. Save um, that in, in your mind and remember how to structure your novel. The next would be the pricing sheet of being able to know what your price range of your novel, novel is after you're done and have completed it and uploaded it for publication, either traditionally or going through the self-publishing route. The content. For uh, like traditionally publication and pricing video and what you need to know will be discussed in this video. Uh, share the information of the story. Keep a fast pace sense such as action scenes or dialogue, as well as a slower piece, uh, sentences, structures, um, introspection, and reflection of building the words to be able to make a beautifully composed and creative story where your reader is going to remain engaged. Your pacing is very important. It doesn't need to go too fast or too slow, and that's something that you will develop over time as you work on your writing ability. Uh, because you remember certain readers like different types of genres and writing is subjective, each approach might be different for each type of audience in which you're trying to dive into or get their attention of. And after all, it's a seeking their attention to be uh, completely committed to reading your entire novel at length. Most books are judged by the first 10 pages or the first 10,000 words of a novel. So you have to engage your reader within the hook of the first 10 pages, and usually that's what a literary agent wants in the request of requirement of reading your material. Certain things from that you understand that the book that you have is the reading example for a type of genre. A genre is a classification of readers that like a specific taste, like a food group in a certain flavor. If you like Italian food, you're going to like a certain type of novel, and that's where your genre comes into play. You have to understand your volume of your readers before you go and finish the structure of your book and try to upload it for submissions through self-publishing platforms like Barnes & Noble, Amazon, KDP, Kindle. You have to know what your book is going to market to or it's not going to sell. And that's one of the reasons why most self-published books do not sell. The author doesn't know what it is. They've been passionate about it, but they have no understanding of what that passion is supposed to be conveying as a message to your reader. 
the vision is lost when you box it and ship it to the world. So you have to understand what it is that you're boxing and shipping to your reader. And branding. Branding comes down to an identity that is based off of what your cover or your interior is stating to the audience, whether it's youth, adult, or children's. You have to make sure that it is appropriate for that age group and that they know that they can pick it up and under, understand everything easily that you're trying to say to them. So everything in genre, the type of category that your book is related to, is very important in developing your writing. Keeping the reader's interest, rather than having them all at once in information uh, dumps. This has become a term over and over. You don't want to bore your reader with an information of throwing way too much material in their face at once to be able to try to process all, all that text in one large paragraph. I've seen young writers who don't even know when to quote, what tenses that they're in, or just give a entire brick wall of text with no uh, indentation or uh, tabs used to be able to space five in for a new paragraph st start. It's really horrific, actually. And it's a shame that I see more and more young writers graduating in the 12th grade that have like second grade writing abilities because they don't even know or had the proper teaching in their education through a public school of teaching them the formatting of a narrative. And that's another thing. A narrative is spoken in first person. And usually you have that person who quotes what they're doing when they're doing it, and it has been done. And that comes down also to tenses. And I, I see this as horrif horrifying by most readers that don't even know their tenses of trying to get the dialogue correctly to be able to convey a message to your reader. And that's the first thing that is going to offend any person that picks up a book and sees that you have tense problems, spelling errors, grammatical issues, and don't know your difference between your first, second, and third person. Which also goes along with your pacing and is also something that is going to make somebody put the, the book down and throw it across the room. Because they're frustrated with the writer's ability not to convey a message in their genre. So something that I would say that you need to use is a good software. Microsoft Word is great. I use Microsoft Word online. I've considered myself a professional writer for 10 years. I still use Microsoft Word. Another tool that I love, absolutely love, adore, think every kid should have it in the public schools, public, public, private, or writer should have Grammarly. It will give you a, um, a diagnostic report of everything that you've typed. It will fix your stupid. This is what I say. It fixes your stupid. And if you have any kind of issue with grammatical errors or spelling mistakes or typos, whatever you want to call it, this will automatically show you a rundown, even in the free version. It's 100% free. will give you um, a good enough understanding of what it is that you're doing wrong. It goes down through a checklist. It's wonderful material for editing. And all editors should use it. Now, your book should never go to publication before it's been properly edited or read by your beta team. A beta team consists of a group of people who are your peers, your intellectuals, or uh, you know people that are close to you that you can trust to be able to read your unpublished manuscript and give an opinion of what they think of your material. This can be subjective, too, because then you can start listening to too many opinions and then completely murder your baby. And, and in a way, your baby becomes your book that you've worked so long, so hard, and so proud of. And then you get the opinions of people who might not be the kindest after you finish this wonderful project. And sometimes, you know, rejection is part of doing this. And if you can't take rejection, it means your book is not that good. If you can't take a comment from somebody that says it sucks, well, it probably does suck, and you're not that good. So you need to go back and revise do re-revision and rewrites until you have the audience completely hooked. Everything about your novel is the hook. And if you can't hook, um, like fishing, if you can't hook your fish with your, your lure, then you have done something wrong. Then you have not baited them in the right way to be able to hook them on your line. Identifying your introspection, your backstory. Sometimes this is interesting. More 
more and more novels have the front story to tell that, and then they have the back story to tell the front story. And having a back story too much um, is an information blocker. This just clogs the pipe of the toilet, and you're just trying to flush shit down people's throats to be able to understand something that you didn't do a good enough job in the front story. Uh, this is a whole terminology that I use. You might not use it at all. But you don't need a backstory to be able to tell what your main protagonist is doing for the front story. You can. This is an interesting thing to do if you're writing a long novel, such as I did. Um, there is a lot of backstory to, again, explain the front story. But then again, you have multiple char characters that give different flavors more than just a vanilla bland placement where you're doing the same thing on repeat on um, excuse me repeat um, so I hope that ha uh, helps you in understanding that having a good backstory to describe your your front story is excellent uh, to use but shouldn't be the main substance of everything that you're trying to give to your audience use negative space between these different uh, sections. Try not to do flip-flop back and forth too much, place, person, and time, because this gets confusing for younger readers, and you just don't want it to be The Sopranos where everything goes to black. You'll lose your audience. You want to break things up with good dialogue, good speech, good text, more than just, oh my, and I was mortified. These are common ways to use simplistic uh, sentence structures that are in second grade nature, and then use a third grade vocabulary word with more than three syllables, which is just a middle finger to the reader. This is becoming more common in popular novels where you're watering down the content to, be give, to give narratives of what we're doing, what we're expressing, and then keeping the storyline sexed up so the reader has something to indulge in. The fantasy of the perfect man with the perfect sculpted chin, the perfect chest, who is the large CEO of a company, who cares? And then the first 10 pages hooks you, and then the rest is poorly formatted uh, emails that were in the back of the book. And I'm sure most of you know which book I'm referring to. I mean, I have a love-hate relationship with this kind of a novel because it does sell, and the merchandise is what also sells the book. But it's not about the reader. It was about selling a oversexed idea that you knew you could market to a genre of 17-year-old kids who's going to rip the cover off and enjoy reading something about being abused and young teenage girls are going to love it because they have the fantasy of being with that man. And that, that's a market of a genre. Something like um, uh, the Shades of Grey stories. That's exactly what I was referring to. That is knowing your genre. And this writer knew exactly what she was marketing to. She made a website and had uh, the audience tell her what should happen next. And then it became a website blog to a published, self-published novel, which is the most successful published, self-published novel in history, which was just based off of what did the audience want. And the audience of young teenagers wanted a sexed up story of idolizing a man who was going to treat them badly and abuse them because that was what the market was for a teenage girl who was 17 years old and wanted to be abused in that form and that would be the the characters of Anna and Christian Grey but it worked same way with Twilight it's it's the same thing it's the same story a young girl who is supposed to be dim-witted is admiring the 117 year old vampire who is doing nothing but using her for the lust of having temptation. And temptation is the hook that is getting your genre. So you need to have the lore. The lore. And the lore is always some kind of taboo or some kind of... Maybe it, a lot of novels use sex because sex is easy to sell. It's one of the oldest things to, in history to be able, able to sell to a, a audience. And... Sometimes that lore is exactly what you need to be able to get a novel sold to the population. It depends on what you want to have for your, your book. Now, if it's a children's book with the new LGBTQ and A, this this is also going into children where we're uh, now conditioning children to believe that this is appropriate for under seventeen age group. 
in, in my own writing, I know that I have done this with kids who are over the age of 13 because they go to adult parties and they act like adults. I think they can handle the concept of intercourse and sex. It shouldn't sell the novel, though. That should not be the only thing that is your genre. If it is, then it's a poorly constructed written work of garbage. Make sure that your word count reaches what you need for your genre of your target mar uh, market to be able to sell your novel. So the six steps. The genre fiction novel step of numbers. Reach the word count for your target age. Next, make sure that your category is age appropriate and is easily read for your target group of audience that is structured and formatted properly in editing. Your approximate size of your novel should be comparable to anybody else in the market that you're selling to, if you're self-published or traditionally. You are not the exception to the rule. You cannot make a novel that goes over or under. It has to be exactly what is specified in the guidelines of what the traditional uh, agent wants or the publisher, or you don't stand a chance. It exists to be the reader's uh, certain age and category and will be accepted and understood as what is contained in a story that is easily understood as examples that would be such as middle grade, contemporary, or adult, fantasy, uh, magical realism, and any kind of genre that you can think of that you would pick up off the shelf at Walmart is exactly what you need to go and find and see if my book, my manuscript that I've been working on, fits into any of these categories. And then look for the publishers that you see with those. Contact them. You're most likely not going to get anywhere without having some kind of a pool or a person that is already in the industry. The industry will tell you if you have this ability or not. Most likely, most people will go down the self-published route because it's a very difficult field to get into. Uh, massively different, it might be, or something significant, should be around 35,000 words for a middle grade, 135,000 words for adult fantasy. So you need to know and think about what it is that you're trying to send of a, a storyline or convey to your audience. A middle grade or young adult. Um, for and then for the genre of things to be like a fantasy or like science fiction thriller romance and so on and so forth is the same as like young adult fantasies where the adult uh, adults are two different categories of age and still indicate that to the reader that they have different expectations for the things of the stories in which they hope to see and the different types of tropes. Tropes are basically the thing that you would read on the back of the book where it gives you the blurb. The blurb is a short understanding of a synopsis or a summary of what comprises in the novel. And that is very important. If you can't summarize your novel from start to end, then you don't know it as a writer, and you wouldn't be able to tell it to your audience if you tried. So you really have to know your, your novel back and forth, front and back, of being able to explain exactly what happens in every chapter, every paragraph, and finalized as a complete story. If you can't do that, then you can't market in genre of knowing what you're trying to sell to the audience. Authors who write books that are 400,000 words, uh, why can't they do that? It's usually because Again, it goes down to what is marketed for the young adult experience. Now, I have done this. I have wrote a very long story, but I also broke them up into serials. I tried to keep the word count between them no more than like 75,000 words. Um, now, depending on the book, the size would be different. Depending on the different category, the size would be different to fit that category. And you have to know with the, the title of your book, or the series, if you want to break it up by the series, or if you want to do it by genre. I chose genre. Genre, for me, was why some books are huge and why some books are smaller. The same thing if you're just publishing a single uh, volume. Uh, a volume is comprised of one book, where you, know, you have your uh, short story that is 5,000 to 7,000, 
you have your uh, novelette, which is 7,000 through 17,000. You have your uh, novella, which is 17,000 through 115,000. You have your novel that is uh, uh, 130,000 to 175,000 words. And then you start going into your series where you have to break them apart because you can, I say only, only put 800 pages in a volume in a publication. And that's even if you're slamming the text into the book. Now, middle grade, you would want to go into the tra traditional type of publication. You want to think of what would be outrageously long. Outrageously long for me was 11 million words. Um, even though you have people in the industry that would say 400,000 words or 100,000 words is a lot. J.K. Rowling has reported uh, 1.2 million words in her entire series, which is Harry Potter 1 through 8. Um, the, the longest recorded novel on, in history is by Marcel Proust, and it has 1.3 million. That's why I said I broke that record, because I, I have multiple times over. But that was Remembrance Things Past, In Search of Lost Time, Swan, Sway, Sodom, and Gomorrah, and the, that entire series. Now, that series was from 1913 through uh, 1923. Uh, it's over 100 years old in its recording. It's no longer the world's longest novel. It's been passed multiple times. But then again, you have stories like genre, speaking of a avant-garde novel by uh, Nigel Tom called The Blust Story, which is absolutely absurd. It, it just states words of re, uh, repetition of using nonsense uh, sentences, saying blah did blah while doing blah while making blah because they were doing blah. Nobody in their right mind would publish this. Um, but he has a market of being able to do a cover. He has an audience. He has the press release. He has the people. He has the marketing. And he had uh, the potential of being able to convince people that this was one of the world's longest novels. And then by the, you know, the rules, it states there's text on a page. And it's put in book format. Does that make it a suitable book for publication? Absolutely not. There's been many people that have attempted this over the years and have failed miserably trying to write a story where they're just taking up character count and words. It's, it's just absurd. It's ludicrous to think that they even would take the, the opportunity to, you know, take the genius writer and water it down to just holding down buttons on the keyboard and calling it a story and then separating it because you used an acronym to be able to run a computer program. It's absolutely horrifying. Um, knowing what is going to be a cost to print and knowing what the cost to print is and knowing that you want to go maybe no more than 50 cents to a dollar over that to be able to make profit off of it. Um, I know sometimes you think that you want to jack up the price to be able to get the story to sell, but sometimes you're going to get more of a reader with uh, honey than you will with vinegar. Keep your book maybe a little bit cheap, not overly cheap because you don't want it to be people to think that it's not worth it. It is definitely worth it, but you are out of a complete obscurity. You've been plucked out of obscurity to be a first-time author. You are not anything special yet, so you have to make sure that you get the audience. Or offer your first book free for a while and see how it does with maybe the first 50 copies. Get reviews. See if it will fit on a bookshelf. Now, print-on-demand books are exactly that. You have to order them from your supplier, or people have to buy them with a credit card. This is something that I find very annoying. Because you have a print-on-demand book, it takes uh, three weeks to order your product and have it shipped to your door instead of going to the shelf and just picking it up off the shelf. Uh, people want things like they want a Big Mac, fast, effortlessly, and just easily obtained. So this is something that you need to think about when you want to go down into publication. Do you want something that's put on demand? Or do you want to try to go traditionally where you have a market? 
And, you know, sometimes I hear that marketing isn't the important thing about your novel, but it's everything. That's that's what genre is. If you don't have somebody marketing your material, it's just going to sit there and rot because nobody knows it exists. Nobody knows you until you brand. And everything that is your product is branding yourself, your name, your story, your image, your cover, your text, and what makes you and comprises you as the author. Being mindful of 95,000 uh, words is um, the, uh, the average to keep in with what you want to be as an in indie uh, author or a first-time author. Independence, there's nothing wrong with being independent. It's a good start and it's a good place to go under a pen name. Nobody knows who you are. And start a, an account on um, Barnes & Noble and do a, uh, a Kindle version or a Nook a version of your book and see how it does. Join book clubs, start different things like going into Goodreads and different platforms. Fan fiction is a wonderful uh, platform for first-time writers. Co-write was uh, a good thing for me to be able to do speed writing. It is a competition between people to see how fast they can write a novel. It's a wonderful practice. It's good to see how it uh, progresses and evolves as you're writing in your, in your different uh, genres. Think about a mid middle grade. It should sometimes be 10,000. I would go with a children's story around 1,000 to 2,000 words. I wouldn't go over that. Middle grade, I, would, I wouldn't go over 15,000 to 17. Uh, chapter books, around the same for young kids at around the age of 12. Make sure that the, the story has a good feel, a, a start, middle, and end, good bone structure, um, that you're building the, uh, the story through engaging them with the sentences that you're trying to say and not boring them with it. Uh, think about uh, the size of the word or the complexity of the words you're using. You do not want to use words that are going to stump them in the middle of the text because they're going to get frustrated. Formatting is another important thing. Um, Make sure that your book is format, formatted in M MLA and uh, you understand how to do the modern language writing process. If you can't write in a Microsoft Word, you could never send in a hand pen document as a submission to a literary agent or a publisher. They'll laugh in your face. So if you can't type your novel, you probably shouldn't be writing your Remember that the, the every 10 chapters should be about 10,000 words. And then you can base your chapters off of that. So, um, seven, uh, yeah. Uh, hold, give me one moment. <laughs> Let me read my notes here. Pricing is another thing. We went down through that. We talked about pricing. Um... Reaching plot and structures. We talked about uh, content, the type of audience that you want to target. Good, 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 good. Let's move on. Description is another thing. When you write your book, you need a good description of what you're trying to sell. That is, again, your genre of your market. Make sure that your book has a climax. Each chapter should start with something interesting at the beginning and end with something interesting or outlandish, wacky, or to keep you going so you read into the next chapter. Again, each chapter should have a book. Uh, a, a great start. This is the James Patterson method. If you have 
a good hook at the beginning and a good hook at the end of the, the chapter, you will read into the next one. Another thing I used uh, through writing was the Proust method of writing and the Gothman uh, questionnaires. This is a great way to be able to develop your protagonist to make sure that they have personality and they're doing something other than just dialogue. Your characters need to reach a level of rising action up to a conflict, fun, middle point, a game, a conclusion, who's your bad guy, what is the dark plot, what is the moments of the light versus dark that is going to be the contrast between the villain and also the hero or the heroine. You gotta know that. You usually dump a new character in from the main point of probably the fourth page in. So if you don't have a new character other than the main character by your fourth page in, you need to think about doing that. You need to think about who you're going to kill off. Usually a, a good story has somebody who has been killed off or has some kind of a major conflict with your main character, the, the protagonist. Again, that has to go with, has to be age appropriate. Now, even Harry Potter, which is considered for young kids, has massive murder within it. This is something that annoys me. Sex and violence is uh, interesting. Sex is not allowed, usually, because the young mind can't process it, but uh, bludging somebody to death at that age group is perfectly fine. So the concept of sex becoming more... Uh, adapted into like the LGBTQ genres of books are becoming more accepted because of that. Uh, the young mind is more developed now more than ever and they're able to understand these concept, the concepts of sexuality and let them think for themselves in critical thinking and judgment. There's nothing wrong with that. Now it doesn't mean we condition our kids to you know want to go and become LGBTQ. That's never the idea for me either. I mean, I'm not for it. I'm not against it. I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes. But, you know, I write in these categories. Do I actually approve of all of them? I think, you know, like the whole target thing right now is completely crazy and very inappropriate for children, depending on the age. But teenagers can understand these concepts of lust and love, and it's a storyline. It's, it's a concept of a genre. It doesn't mean that it's supposed to persuade anybody to do one thing or another just by reading a text of a book. You have to make up your own mind of your conclusions if you want to buy into it or not. So that's a conflict right there. And, you know, that is going to get a lot of people interested in your conflict. They're either going to cause a riot or an agreement. And that's part of uh, good writing, is knowing what is going to either piss everybody off or they're going to love it and want to read more. I think I'm going to conclude this video for now. This is getting a little bit long, and um, we'll uh, move forward the next video. Let me see if I need anything in here else that we could add to this to help you and these highlighted details feel probably um, be a great thing. Slow down, make sure that you edit, edit, edit. Do not publish your first draft. Go through it six times before you publish it. Make sure that it's edited and 100% readable. Uh, make sure you change the font before you print because you're going to miss things in the font. Uh, believe me, you will miss things that you have overlooked Get somebody else's eyes on it, change the font size, make sure you print it in physical paper copy because you'll need to do line edits and lots of them. A book is never really finished when it's self-published because you can always go back and make changes, which is a horrible thing in the back of your mind to know that you can always do a revision of the revision after you've revised it. And sometimes you have to know when to stop playing with the book and publish it anyway and just see how it does and that you know that's trial and error 
And the whole thing about writing, you know, at any point is an experimentation. You have to experiment and you have to see what people do or don't like. You can either make yourself look like a hero, a zero, or really brilliant, or absolutely idiotic. It just depends on the audience and the people that read your material. And it also determines your, your personality of what you're trying to say. So I hope this video has helped you all, and uh, it you know it's 35 minutes long. I hope I said some interesting things here that could help some inspiring young writers. Um, just remember that genre is what you're trying to sell to a market of your future audience of people who are going to buy your book. It, it doesn't even have to be a book. It can be anything that you're using to market. Um, if you have an image, you need an image. You need a brand. You need a name. You need text that is worth reading. You need good formatting and editing. And you need to be precise and considerate and clear. Clear, concise, and considerate. Um, and also know that your price is not outlandish or not too um, uh, cheap. Don't go too cheap either. And make sure that your text is, again, clear, concise, and credible. If it's fiction, make sure that the events, the person, place, and things are completely fictional and that you have addressed that too. Know your category. Know your audience. That's everything.